everyone. Welcome to Developmental Psychology. Um, this is a short video to welcome you to the class, so welcome, um, and talk a little bit about how the course is going to unfold and some strategies for success. So a little bit of the syllabus, a little bit of study strategies, um, shouldn't take too long, and it's recorded so you can watch it in double time if you want to. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is um, every week there will be a weekly checklist posted in Blackboard in the folder for that week, um, and I'll also post an announcement. Those are the two ways to know what's due that week. Um, I think sometimes students use the Blackboard calendar or the um, gradebook um, to determine what they need to turn in, and that isn't a terrible thing to do, um, but there's sometimes things that don't hit the calendar, don't hit the gradebook, um, that you also have to do. Um, and it might be part of an assignment, and you wouldn't know about it unless you looked at the checklist. So just look at the checklist. Um, I post that in the order that I think that makes the most sense, um, and it's numbered, um, so if you've got questions about it, um, uh, you know, get in touch with me early in the week and I'd be glad to clarify that for you. Um, this is an eight-week class rather than a 16-week class, um, so you should expect to spend about six hours a week interacting with the class in Blackboard or doing assignments over and above the reading. So that's typical for a college class, um, about two hours outside um, for every, um, you know, for every credit or I don't know, however I do the math is going to probably come out wrong. Um, but it should take about six hours. So when I look at the checklist, I try to estimate how long it would take the average student, not, you know, not how long it would take me because I, can, I wrote it so I can probably do it more quickly. Or you know, there's going to be some people who are going to spend more time on it. Um, and so if you're wildly um, different from that, I, I've never heard anybody complain that they were spending too little time in the course. Um, but if you're spending much more than six hours doing the work and doing the assigned work, um, then let me know and we can talk about what it is that you're spending time on and I might be able to help you, um, you know, rearrange things or just think about what some strategies are for success. Um, speaking of the reading, um, there's a lot of reading in this class. Because it's double time, it's about 100 pages a week and we've got a 600 page book to get through in eight weeks um, and we've got a couple of tests and so some weeks there'll be a little bit less reading. But this first week, there's a, there are 100 pages to read. So um, here's my strategy, not just for this class, but for any um, college class that's got a lot of reading in it. Read the chapter summary first. Um, just read through it. Don't take any notes. Just read all the way through it. Um, then open your book. Skim the chapter. You know, I mean, read, but don't don't try to take notes. Don't try to do a close read the first time through. Um, just read through the chapter. Because if you never get to the end of the chapter because you were doing a close read on the first one third of it, then you've missed. You know, you know, you get to a test and and what was in the last part of the chapter is a complete mystery to you. Um, so skim the chapter all the way through. Um, if you get to some stuff you don't understand, just keep going because um, it might become clear later. Um, then read the chapter summary again, a little bit more slowly this time, um, and see whether there are any things in the chapter summary that you still don't understand. If that's the case, go back and do a close, what we call a focused read, on just those sections, right? So you don't need to go back and reread everything from the start. There are going to be some things that you already know. If you you know, have an adolescent, some of the things in the adolescent development chapter will be stuff that you go, oh yeah, I already knew that, duh. Um, and so if that's the case, move on. You know, spend your time on focusing on the things that are in the book that, that aren't clear to you. Um, and again, you know, always reach out to me or, or, or you know, reach out as far. I, always, I, I don't necessarily like the word reach out. Um, email me or, um, or call me or uh, set up a Teams meeting with me. Um, I've posted slides for each chapter. Um, they are not to be studied, right? There's nothing in the slides that is only in the slides. Um, you can feel free that, you know, feel confident that if you read the book, um, that's going to be uh, where the bulk of, the, of the, the study time should be. And I'm also going to provide you with a study guide about a week before each test. So um, I don't want to do it before that because I haven't written the test and I'd like the study guide to closely match what is actually in the test. But um, so, um, so don't study the slides, but you, they can be a useful vehicle for taking notes um, as you're working your way through. So if they're useful to you, use them. If they're not, you can completely ignore them. Um, I have a text messaging, um, I don't have it, there's a text messaging feature called remind.com and the instructions for that are in the syllabus and also I think on the course resources or the getting started page in Blackboard. Um, if you sign up for that, Periodically, I'll send reminders out. Um, if there's something that's changed, I'll send a reminder out. It's also a, a really great way for you to send me a text message um, because like you, I have my phone with me all the time. I don't have Teams and, and email running all the time, um, but I see my text messages. And if it's something that can't wait, um, then I'll text you back, and I see it, I'll text you back. 
Um, if it's in the middle of the night, I it, it won't ding, so I won't hear it. You won't be bothering me. And when I get up in the morning, um, I'll text you back. So um, feel free to use that. I would say for things that are long, um, use email. But if it's something short, if you've got a quick question about where something is or when something's due, um, don't hesitate to send me a text message. Um, uh, and there's also a bonus point associated with that. So I'll talk about bonus points in a minute. Um, there's also a bonus point associated with coming to Teams meetings. So this week, um, in the first week of class, we will have two options because I don't really know what people's schedules are. Um, so there'll be two options for an introductory meeting. Um, try and come to one of those. No need to come to both of them. It'll be exactly the same thing in both meetings. Um, and then after the first week, um, and I have a better idea of when students are free, um, I'll set up a weekly meeting. Um, it tends to be in the evening because that's the time when most people are free, um, but I don't know what, what will be the, the most convenient time for this class. It's not gonna be convenient for everybody, and I apologize for that. Um, I will record them. Um, there's an alternate to coming to those meetings um, that is participating in the Blackboard discussion. Um, so even though there's a bonus point in coming to the meetings, there are plenty of opportunities for bonus points. So don't worry if you don't make it to a meeting and you don't get the bonus point. Um, but um, I, actually, I want you to come to the meeting anyway, not just for the bonus point. So um, the meetings are a great time for us to discuss the material. So there's a Blackboard discussion that you can type your responses to. Um, but sometimes it's just interesting to just talk about or ask questions or discuss things that are in the chapter. And so that's what I'm hoping those meetings will be for. Um, um, I would say finish one week before you start the next one, but I do try to post the next week a few days early. Um, so the weeks start on Monday, um, and I usually try by Friday or Saturday to get the following week posted. Um, don't feel overwhelmed. Don't, don't even look at it if that overwhelms you. Um, work on the stuff that's due um, Sunday night first, um, and then look um, to what's coming up in the next week. Um, so, um, you know, I just I, I have it out there in case you finish early or you um, have something going on and you'd like to work ahead a little bit um, to give students the opportunity to do that. Um, similarly, if you miss a week, um, I would say if you miss all the assignments in a week, um, work on the current week, right? If you missed an entire week for any reason, um, uh, and it happens sometimes, um, don't go back and, and work on that one because then you're late on that one and you're late on the new one. So start on the new week. Um, do all the work for the new week and then go back and finish the things. You can't make up a discussion because it, it would be an empty room, um, but the assignments um, can be made up or um, not always for credit, but the credit isn't probably the most important thing there. Um, so talk to me if you've got questions about that. There are certain things that you can make up, certain things that you can't, or turn in late, certain things that you can't. Um, late work, um, it's okay to ask me, um, but you don't need to email me um, on Sunday um, saying that you're not gonna get finished Sunday night. Um, I don't typically start my grading in the Blackboard gradebook um, until midday on Monday at the earliest, and sometimes it's Monday evening. So if you can get it in before I get there, um, I grade all the work that's turned in, and then I go back and enter zeros for missing work. So um, if you can beat me to that, then um, turn it in late. You know, you don't even have to ask me. If you have an assignment and there's not a zero in the gradebook for it yet, then go ahead and turn the assignment in because I'm gonna get to it and grade it. Um, once I've finished grading for that entire assignment, though, I will put in zeros for the missing work. So, um, so um, that's just how that works. Um, your work in this class is graded, but your attendance is not. Um, so attendance doesn't have any impact on your grade unless you miss two consecutive weeks, and that's a college rule. Um, if you're missing for 14 consecutive days, um, even if that includes a spring break or, uh, or a weekend or whatever, um, it's 17, or excuse me, 14 calendar days, then I have to withdraw you. So just keep track of, of when you're turning in work. Um, and beyond that, you don't need to tell me. You know, I understand that people have busy lives, life is complicated, um, children work, other classes. Um, so if you miss something, you miss something, right? Um, if you miss an assignment, it has this much impact on, um, on your overall grade. Um, if you miss one quiz, I drop the lowest two quizzes. So um, don't get too wrapped up in missing a little thing here and there. However, don't fail to turn in the paper. That's an entire letter grade. So um, late papers do have a late penalty, but it only goes down to 50%. It's always better to turn in a late paper than no paper. Um, don't miss a test. Those are 65% of your grade. Um, the first one, the midterm, is worth less than the others because, or less than the others, less than the final, um, because people typically do better on the final. As the course progresses, and this is true in any field, the more you learn about human development, um, the easier it is for you to incorporate new information into your knowledge of human development. Um, so by the time you get to the final, 
um, learning something new about child development or adolescent development or adult development uh, will be relatively easy to incorporate into what you already know versus when you're learning it for the first time. So um, the first, uh, the midterm exam is 25% of your grade. The final exam is 40%. Um, so don't miss a test, obviously. Um, and then the other assignments, you know, the discussions and the, um, and the writing, short writing assignments that go along with the weekly videos and work um, are worth relatively little and there are a lot of them. Um, so, you know, again, don't be too upset if you miss one. Um, if you're consistently missing a lot of them, um, talk to me or, um, you know, or, you know, yeah, talk to me. Um, um, grading and bonus points. Um, the grading um, is set up in the syllabus, so um, you'll be able to see your weighted average in Blackboard. Um, your weighted average changes a lot when things that are worth a lot are entered. Um, so you could have an A in the class going into the midterm, and if you miss the midterm, it, it'll go straight to an F because um, the way the weighted average works is that um, it isn't until the assignment is due that those points become part of both the numerator and the de numerator and the denominator. So, um, so be cautious early in the semester, um, or actually throughout the semester, in looking at your weighted average and thinking that that's the grade you're going to have in the class. The final is 40% of your grade. If you skip the final, nobody passes the class by skipping the final. So, um, not that you would, but um, just you know, as that as an extreme example. Um, bonus points. Um, I, there are bonus points that will be added to the discussion average. So at the end of the semester, um, the discussion is worth 5% of your grade. Um, missing a discussion is something that you can't make up, so I've driven all of the bonus points into that. And periodically throughout the semester, I'll say, if you do this thing, there'll be a bonus point. Um, the first bonus point is to sign up for Remind.com. The second one is to come to the initial Teams meeting. and. Um, then, you know, when, we, when course evaluations are ready, there'll be one for that. Um, you know, there'll be, throughout the semester, there'll be, um, you know, bonus points here and there. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is um, in syllabus part three is uh, unique to our course. Syllabus parts one and two is the division and the department syllabus. And in the department syllabus in part two are the stu student learning outcomes for this course. Um, and I would encourage you to read those. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to ask you in the icebreaker is to tell me which one of those speaks to you the most, which one of those is the most interesting to you. Um, but those are the things that you should be able to do at the end of the semester. Um, and everything that we learn and everything that we do falls under one of those student learning outcomes. So if you're wondering where the course will go or sort of what the scope of the course is, that's it. Um, okay, and that's it for this video. Um, have a great uh, first week, and I look forward to meeting all of you. Bye.